Hello everyone, my name is Ibadur Rahman. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about linear regression from a completely different perspective, which is a maximum likelihood approach. So, in linear regression, we have a very simple equation, which is also known as a straight line equation, or we can say as a line equation, which is y is equal to mx plus p, or we can also say it as yn is equal to mxn plus p, in which x is our set of inputs and y n is our uh, corresponding set of outputs and then using these two values we try to find the value of m and b such that we get the correct output when we input x n let's consider a very simple example in which we have only two data points in our training set that we have to predict so the two data points that we have for training set is x is equal to 2 and 3 and the corresponding output for these two data point is y is equal to 1 and 2 which means that if we input 2 to our machine learning linear regression algorithm we should expect an output of 1 or if we input 3 to our linear regression algorithm we should expect an output of 2. Now what we have to do is that we have to train our algorithm or train this equation or try to find the value of m and b such that it gives the correct prediction right so what we do is that we will try to plug in the value of x and y in this general equation so we know that y n is equal to m x n plus p so in place of y we will put the value of y which is 1 and in place of x we'll put the value of x which is 2 for this particular case and we don't know anything about m and b so we will leave it as it is similarly for the second input or the second data point we'll put the value of 2 we'll put the value of y from here similarly we'll put the value of x from here and we will leave m and b as it is because we don't know its value now we have two equations two simultaneous equations using substitution method you will try to find the value of m and b such that both of these two equations are satisfied and if we try to do that you will get the value of b equal to minus 1 and m equal to 1 right so if we put the value of m and b in both of these equations both of these equations will be satisfied now what we will do is that we will replace the value of b and m in our general equation and let's see what we get so y n y is equal to m instead of m we will replace it with 1 and instead of b we will replace it with minus 1 so you'll get an equation y is equal to x minus 1 now if we input our data point over here x is equal to 2 over here we will get the value of y which is equal to 1 and we are getting the correct value similarly if we input 3 we will get the value of uh, 3 minus uh, 1 2 over here which is the also the correct value now we have trained our model with 100 percent accuracy by just using a substitution method but this is not generally the case we generally don't have only two data points we have n number of data points we have thousands or let's say millions of data points in our uh, data set in real life so let's try to progress this problem let's say that what if we have three data points instead of two data points so the three data points that we have is the three inputs that we have is two three and five and the corresponding output for these three input is 1 32 and 3 now we will follow the same procedure that we followed earlier and we will plug in these three inputs and outputs into our general straight line equation so we get 1 equal to 2m plus b uh, 1 we got from here and 2 we got from here and m plus b we don't know anything about m and b so we will leave it as it is similarly for the second equation we get 32 is equal to 3m plus b 32 we got from here and 3 we got from here and m and b as it is same goes for the third equation 3 we got from here 5 we got from here and m and b remains as it is now what if we try to find the value of 
M and B using substitution method or using any methodology that satisfy all of these three equations. We won't be able to do so because there are three equations and there are only two unknowns. This type of system of equations is known as a, a overdetermined system. In an overdetermined system, there is no way we can find the value of m and b that satisfied all of these three equations, right? Now, let's say that instead of three data points, we have n data points, which is usually our general case, which is usually our practical case where we have one lakh, one million, even million data points, right? So let's say we have n data points. Now, in this case, we have n equations and only two unknowns. So we need to find the value of m and b such that all of these equations are satisfied or we can say close to satisfied because the term minimal error over here means that satisfied or close to satisfied. So for instance, if we give an input of two, we can expect an output of 0 0.99 or an output that is very close to one. Similarly, if we give an output of 2554, we can expect an output of 47.9 or 49.1 or 48.9, very close to 48, right? So how do we do that? We cannot try to solve these equations using substitution method. So we will use a different deck. So what do we do now is this that we will add an error with each of the equations that we had. So for instance, with this equation, one is equal to 2m plus b, we will add an error of e1. This equation we got from here, one is equal to 2m plus b. We just added an error of e1 over here. Similarly, for the second equation, two is equal to 3m plus b, we will add an error and we'll name it e2 over here and so on and so forth. And for the last equation, 48 is equal to 2554m plus b that we got from here, we will add an error en. So now we have n inputs, 1, 2, and so on and so forth, and n inputs, and we have n plus 2 unknown variables. So we have m, b, and e1 till en. So we have n plus 2 unknown variables. So now we have turned our system from an overdetermined system to an in underdetermined system. Now we have more unknown variables than the number of equations. So now what, do I, what is our task over here? What is our main purpose over here? Our main purpose over here is to find the value of m and b such that e1 is minimum and it satisfies this equation. We need to find the value of m and b over here as well such that the e2 is minimum and it is satisfied over here or close to satisfied. Similarly, over here, we will try to find the value of m and b, making sure that en remains minimum. So in general, our major task is to make sure that e1, e2, e3, e4, up till en, all of them, they are as minimal, as less as possible. Correct? Now, let's say that, for instance, let's assume that these values, these variables that we just added, e1, e2, e3, up till en, they come from a Gaussian distribution with mean of zero and variance of sigma square, right? Now, why we assume that, I will tell you in the future slides. Now, just for instance, the equation that we had, uh, these all of these equations, we can also write it in a general format as yn is equal to mxn plus b plus en. And here we can input the value. If it is y1, it can be y1 is equal to mx1 plus b plus e1, mx2 plus b plus e2, and so on and so forth. Now let's talk about Gaussian distribution because we assume that e1, e2, e3 up till en comes from a Gaussian distribution. So what is a Gaussian distribution? Now Gaussian distribution is a very uh, common probability distribution. It is used to represent random continuous numbers and a standard form of how we write a Gaussian distribution is like this. We use it with a character which is similar to n, which is also known as a Gaussian distribution of y with mean uh, mu and variance sigma square, right? 
and if we expand this equation we can also write it as 1 upon square root of 2 pi sigma square e power minus y minus mu whole square divided by 2 sigma square. Now in Gaussian distribution there are some very awesome properties that we can utilize to solve our equations to solve our problem. Now we know that we can write the Gaussian distribution like this and let's say that if we have a very simple th equation y is equal to a plus b and let's assume that b comes from a Gaussian distribution so p of b is equal to a Gaussian distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square. In that case p of y will be equal to a Gaussian distribution with mean mu plus a and variance sigma square right. So if we know the Gaussian distribution of b and we add any constant over here we can find the Gaussian distribution of y as well right and also in general we can also uh, write the Gaussian distribution in a short format n of mu comma sigma square instead of writing it completely over here. So whenever we see this value n or n bracket mu comma sigma square we can assume that it is the just consolidated form of this expanded form.